In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and God, the Word, was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. The glory has of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Seated, please. In the 19th century, Lewis Redner and Phillips Brooks gave us the Christmas hymn, You Know Well, O Little Town of Bethlehem. And we're going to sing together this verse. I hope you can see it. And let's sing it together this morning, all right? that last verse. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Last evening at the first service at 4.30, I asked the kids if they thought about what they wanted for Christmas. And of course, they had a lot of great answers, and I hope they were delighted with uh, what, how it turned out for them last night. But now, for you this morning, I'm not asking what you want for Christmas. But rather, I'm asking, what do you hope for? Like the verse says, what are your hopes for this day and for this moment on? And I think that's really a loaded question when you ask anyone, what do you hope for? In fact, when we talk about hope with someone, it's truly a revealing question. Because if others know your hopes, they have a window, I think, into your soul. And perhaps there's no better question for getting to know who a person really is and who they hope to be. They plan to be. Many people, I think, approach religion these days as some kind of internal fulfillment of their hopes. And naturally, we come to find peace in the midst of our anxious lives. That's a primary hope. And we come today to worship here, hoping that through the hymns, through the scripture readings, the preaching and the prayers, perhaps that hope is met with a needed sense of peace and stillness. We hope for purposeful, reflective purpose and 
things in our lives as well. And perhaps church then becomes this one place among all other places where we can truly bear our souls, where our hopes can be shared, where our yearnings can be spoken and heard. The Gospels of Jesus Christ continually engage and welcome our hopes and our expectations. We hear again today how Jesus came as light in the midst of darkness. Is there any better analogy, example than that? But again, the point that we hear throughout this, and with John and Jesus both, is that neither were the light that anyone expected. Jesus was the hope of the world, as John truly says. But as he also points out, he wasn't the hope that the rest of the world hoped for. And this would be an ongoing expectation and struggle on the part of Jesus. What many wanted at that time was a very decisive military leader who would raise up an army and run the Romans out of town. And when Jesus didn't do that, of course, they rejected him. They wanted someone who would reinforce their current religious practices and beliefs. And when Jesus did not do that, again, we know that they turned against him with murderous intensity. And today, the church confronts us with John the Baptist, an odd preacher who really doesn't match up with anyone's hopes, of course. And so John, like he always does, intrudes upon our hopeful expectations of a Messiah. He has only really one thing to say today, and that is, the light is coming. What do we make of someone who is self-described as light? I think light is difficult to define. It is certainly difficult to limit and keep out. And John says that he himself is not the light, but he is a witness to that light. He receives the light. He even points to the light, but he makes it very clear he is not the light. And so to those who want to define and classify and even pigeonhole Jesus, John simply says, Among you stands one whom you do not know. And so at this point, we don't have much substance, no defining content, no real strong handles on this man Jesus. And so we too decide and maybe even discover as we hear this that even our hopes today may not be fulfilled as we expected. But John gives us the answer, the resolution to that. He simply tells us it's not a matter of our comprehension. It's a matter of our seeing. And so he says, simply open your eyes. Don't overthink it, as we're prone to do. Simply open your eyes and then adjust your vision to the light of God that dawns upon us. Well, later in this gospel, of course, Jesus offers many self-descriptions. He says, I am the vine. Later he says, I am the bread. And then again, I am the way and the truth and the life. But right now, today, John simply introduces him as light. Over the years, uh, it's been really interesting, I think, as we've seen our culture shifting away from churches and attendance in churches and membership to what I would call individual spirituality. And so some of the stuff and reasoning we hear why people are not as involved in church today as they used to be comes across to me at least as a hodgepodge of random expectations and desires. And quite often I find that individual spirituality becomes more or less this convenient means of basically bypassing the church, the body of Christ, in order to fashion one's own beliefs, which is dangerous territory. And that's why Christmas is such an important and critical place to begin. Because today we simply lay aside our hopes and expectations, and as John says, simply lets the light dawn upon us, entering freely into all those dark places in our minds, our souls, and our hearts. This Christmas, we too gather as witnesses to that light. And whether we have known it or not, 
This is the gift that all of us hope for. Because all of our restless striving, all of our rushing here and there, our grabbing, our getting, our buying and accumulating, all our attempts to provide light and life on our own. And yet this day, John announces that what we desire most is God. What we hope for and what we need is not a gift of our own planning or design, not that which we acquire through some store or online, but what we need most comes to us as pure gift. And this day it comes to us, indeed He comes to us, this Word who was with God and who is God comes to everyone enlightening this darkened world. Remember, Emmanuel, God with us. This is what we truly hope for this Christmas. And that is why today we gather and sing the most joyous of songs, thanking God for Jesus, who is our light and our life. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for messengers like John who proclaim the truth, who surprise us with the news we were not expecting. Lord, so often we try to fashion our lives around our hopes and expectations. And yet we confess here today that you have surprised us once again with the birth of your Son, that through the Incarnation you have been born in flesh to walk among us, to save us from our sins, to die and rise again so that we too might share in the resurrection. Lord, bless us for the coming of this light again today, this light of Christmas morning. And may our hopes and our dreams be found in this baby Jesus, this sign of your eternal love for each of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.